To the one main unifying factor across America right now, the discontent with this presidential election. A New York Times CBS poll recently found that 80 Two percent of the country reports the 2016 campaign has made them feel more, quote, disgusted than excited. Despite that, the nation could be on track for its highest ever voter turnout. Adam Riley caught up with a few Election Day voters in Revere, where he found plenty of people on both sides of the aisle. At polling places across Revere today, traffic was slow but steady, and there was plenty of pro-Trump sentiment. I don't trust Hillary one bit, and I should be a Democrat, but... Sorry, I don't trust her. Trump is a man. We need a change. But to say those Donald Trump backers were feeling confident would be an overstatement. I'm nervous. I'm hoping for a miracle. Anything can happen. Which raises an obvious question. If Trump loses, is there anything Hillary Clinton could do to win over his supporters? The answers we got in Revere weren't encouraging. Actually, no. Unfortunately, I, I don't believe in her values. First, Hillary Clinton gets in. We'll have Monica Lewinsky as Secretary of State to take care of Bill. For the record, there's also plenty of Clinton support in this blue-collar, increasingly diverse city. We always had um, male presidents in the White House, so maybe there'll be something different. You know, she's so smart, and she's, you know, been around a long time, and I trust her. I do trust her. His policies on immigration um, would really uh, tear at uh, the fabric of our country, uh, and I think that it would really... Um, unjustly um, ruin a lot of people's lives. And for Clinton partisans, the prospect of Trump finding a way to bring them into the fold if he takes the White House seems equally far-fetched. I'm not very optimistic about that happening. Our country is divided um, more so than I think we, we realized um, a year to two years ago. Um, and I think a lot of that um, has to do with race. And yes, there are also people in Revere who aren't sure they can stomach either candidate. I don't trust either one of them. And I say, and a lot of people say, is this the best we could do, our country? Still, in her worst case scenario, one candidate in particular plays a starring role. Trump, if he loses, is going to be pissed. He's going to say so. It was rigged, and it's going to start a race war. That's my concern which is about as pessimistic as it gets. But in Revere, on this particular election day, optimism about the future is in short supply. Adam joins me now. Hey, Adam. Hey, Jim. I know this is anecdotal, but it seems to me from watching that, like much of America, much of Revere is voting against a candidate rather than for a candidate. Yeah, is it that felt fair? like I was pulling teeth trying to get people to say why they supported Trump or supported Hillary. It was all about defining them in opposition to the other person for whom they had great distaste. Does that, that, I gotta does say, that upset them? I mean, it so upsets me, but does it upset the voters you've... I get the sense it does. I mean, I, you know, we did that piece in Derry, New Hampshire yesterday, yeah. and I feel like there's this really palpable... Fatigue. People are hoping their candidate pulls it up, but I think as as a group, voters, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and elsewhere are just beaten down by this, and I think that applies to some in the media too. What makes a working class community in a very blue state like uh, Revere in Massachusetts so open to a Trump candidacy? That's a do you think? Great question. To me, it seems sort of like one of those places where support for Trump is almost overdetermined. To use the social science lingo, you know, it used to be a thriving city. Now it's it's perceived as not being as uh, in good shape economically as it used to be. Big influx of immigrants. There was a terrific Wall Street Journal piece a couple weeks back that found that Trump support tended to be highest in areas that had experienced yeah, rapid so. demographic change. You've also got Italian Americans, maybe to a lesser extent Irish Americans, who remember what their family did when it comes to immigration. The process they had to go through, mm -hmm. the hoops they had to jump through, the rules that might have kept them out for a while. They see new immigrants not doing that, and they resent it. So all those things put together, and it's almost a natural. Adam, thanks for the package. See you thanks, here tomorrow Jim. night. All right.